you know, I, I want to argue with you about something else that you said once. And it was to me and studio <laughs> owner Paul Camerata, which was about Pat Boone and Jim Morrison. Right. Do you remember? I do. Okay. Can you say that again? What I said was, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the full version so that yeah. whoever's watching this will get the full flavor, which is I said that su all successful artists, really successful artists, have some form of magic. Right? There's some alchemy there. There is something that connected a 12-year-old to Jim Morrison, to Janis Joplin, to Led Zeppelin, to whomever. And I tell my students in the first week of class, and I said, and if you think it's about the music, you're going to fail my class. Because if you think it's about the music, then by deductive logic and reasoning, you also think the magic to James Dean is about his acting. And you think the magic to Marilyn Monroe is that she's hot, beautiful, and blonde. Now, all those things are true, and music is a really excellent entry point, but it's not the thing. And I have two ways to prove that to you, or two ways to illustrate. Number one, Pat Boone had a lot more gold records and hit singles than Jim Morrison ever did. So if it's about the music, why are 12-year-olds not discovering Pat Boone? And the second thing that I use to measure that is go to any festival, now that they're happening again, Find that 19-year-old kid in a Clash t-shirt and ask him to name his three favorite songs, <laughs> right? Or one of our peers who's sitting in that, you know, really hipster bar in Silver Lake wearing the bitchin' aqua blue green Coltrane shirt, ask him what his favorite Coltrane composition is. You already know he doesn't know the answer because it's not about the music. The yeah. music is the entry point, yeah. right? And I used to tell artists when I was doing new artist development, which used to be my thing, I was like, dude, I, I can't manage songs. I, I manage artists. I manage artists. So have a fucking point of view. Stand for something. Tell me what you are about. Right? If I have to tell you, then I'm the artist. Um, but you should have some kind of identity. You know, the word brand is interesting. People overuse it a lot. Oh, I'm branding myself. Or, oh, I'm going to rebrand. And they, they throw this word around. And it actually has a definition. A brand is a set of identifiers or things that tell you what something is about. Every human being has their own brand, right? Every product has their own brand. Um, like Coca-Cola, their brand is they are America. You know, it's classic, tried and true, American drink since the 1800s, red can, same thing, right? Pepsi, choice of a new generation. Pepsi is all about you know, surfing and skating and BMX and Coca-Cola is about walking through the park with your honey, you know, on, on July 4th. <laughs> um, they're both really just carbonated brown sugar water. But people buy into that brand, right? Every human being has a brand. What shirt you're wearing, what watch you're wearing, what car you step out of, what the things you say, the way you style your hair, the people you're hanging out with, give a clue to an outside observer of who and what you might be about. Yes. Obviously, it's only a very surface thing, right? But if you see a guy walking down the street with a leather collar and a leather bracelet with spikes on it, you know, and he's got some goth tattoo, it gives you an indicator of what this guy's about versus some other guy who's got a pocket protector and broken glasses and, you know, a buttoned-up sports shirt tucked in. Um, and so we all have different identifiers. We all have different facets that, that contribute to our brand that let outsiders kind of know what, we're about it gives them an introduction to us before they meet us or get to know us. That's like Frank Zappa, <coughs> Frank Zappa said as well. M music has become the wallpaper of our lives, and that's why it's no more uh, obvious than with like Radiohead fans too. They need you to know that they listen to Radiohead. You know, would you? Yeah, agree? like vegans. Yeah. Exactly. Somebody said, "How you cook? Can you tell someone's vegan?" And I said, "Don't worry, they'll so, fucking tell you." In the first five seconds. Yeah, in. things today are more overt. Right? There was actually, there's this Freudian model that I follow. I don't want to get too pedantic here. But Freud talked about his theory was that human beings are the only animals that are born without instinct. And as a replacement for instinct, we have the ability to reason and, and our intellect. Not to mention that great opposable thumb. But um, he said we, the human being goes through three phases of life. Right, We go through an infantile ego an adolescent ego state, and an adult ego state. And there, 
designed to do three different things, right? So the infantile ego state, we come out of the womb, and it's completely self-centered. It's focused on self, and it allows a baby to cry out when he's in danger or hungry or cold to attract the attention of his mother or father to help ensure his survival. So the, in, the um, infantile ego state is all about survival. And around age 11, 12, 13, we naturally morph into an adolescent ego state. And that's the first time that as a human we see beyond the end of our own nose. We come out of this self-centered phase and we start to like, kind of like a gopher popping his head up through the dirt and we start to look around and go, who am I? Right? It's what Essie Hinton wrote about when she wrote The Outsiders. It was a bunch of 13-year-olds trying to figure out, am I a soch? Am I a greaser? Am I a jock? Um, and, I, and then around age 17, 18, 19, we morph into an adult ego state, which allows us to give and nurture life. So those are the three phases, survival, socialization, passing on life. But that socialization phase lasts from age, say, 13 to 18, it corresponds with middle school and high school. And what happens is we come into middle school as a blank slate. And by the time we finish high school, we have completely branded ourselves. We'll figure out, am I a surfer? Am I a jock? Am I a nerd? Am I a stoner? And by the way, we, every artistic and aesthetic decision we will make for the rest of our lives is based on that foundation we will establish during those years. Wow, that's amazing. And that's... as a company... That's where I focus a lot of our, our energies and our resources is getting right to those people when they're coming out as a blank canvas. And when they're trying to figure out who they are, here, here's Jim Morrison. Here's Janis Joplin. Here's Bird. Check it out. You might like it. Because if I get them, I got them for life. That's extremely accurate. 